Matt Nicholas, good morning to you, uh, Steph. Oh, good morning to you, Gareth. Sorry, I'm a bit croaky this morning. I've got a cold, so uh, I'm a bit Simpson this morning. It's typical of September. Yeah. Um, we have the the nice warm weather, and then of course uh, it hits us at six sometimes. So you're okay, you yeah? generally I'm, yeah, speaking. Yeah, I'm fine. Just a little bit croaky. But a, bit, a little yeah. bit, just like a frog. Yeah. <laughs> so you've worked hard. You put uh, pen to paper. Is that what they say these days? Pen to paper. Well, I probably old-fashioned people like me would say it, but yeah, it was more like fingers to keyboard. Really. That's right. Yeah. That's the way it is now. Because yeah. there's, there's an interesting photo in the book. Um, this book is called Town and Country Cure, by the way, from Ponzi Pres to the Pop Press. Uh, you're a journalist, trained uh, journalist, and this is why we said in the old days it was pen to paper, but of course it's all computer now. That transformation, before we talk about the book, um, it's been a long road from pen to paper to keyboard and computers, isn't it? Absolutely. When I started off, I was a local correspondent on the Ponzi Observer when I was about, I'd just gone 19. And we typed our stories, you know, that's how we did it in those days. It was a long process to get a newspaper made. And then I went off to London. Well, I went off to Hertfordshire, first of all, for my first newspaper. And um, we actually still used typewriters then in 1987. It was only when I got to London in the late 80s, our first computers arrived. Wow, you know, these fancy Apple Macs. And it was all the high tech and, you know, a different world for us. Mm. Do you think uh, there were advantages of pen to paper? Absolutely. Do you know, I always carry a notebook. I always have a notebook with me and a pen or a pencil because some things you're, you're just going to miss. But that old fashioned way of getting stories down, getting quotes down, you just can't beat that, I don't think. And of course, photographers say the same thing, Steph, and they make sure you've got your camera with you. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I've known photographers who've been at incidents and they Car is, the camera's been tra trapped in the boot of the car and they've forgotten to get it. They think, come on, you know, you were on the scene, but your camera was only in the boot of the car. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, right, this book then, Town and Country Girl. Yeah, it's it's a fascinating read, even just browsing oh, through thank it. thank you. Um, what made you do that? What made you put, uh, shall we say, pen to paper then? Go on. Well, I, I was a journalist in London <clears> in the late 80s when it was like the golden era for the music papers. So you'd go on a news agent, you'd have the enemy, the melody maker, sounds, and you'd have the smaller magazines, still really popular magazines. I've got to ask you this, yeah. Charles Shahar Murray, did you ever come across Charles? No, I didn't. Very famous music journalist, isn't he? I, I know the name, but no, I never met him, probably just before my generation, really, you know. Okay. And um, yeah, it was a golden age, there were so many music papers, and I just got in on the tail end as freelance and, you know, wrote for those papers, and... I never met any other female journalists, um, certainly not from Wales. So I thought, oh, so very yeah. male dominated then. It was, it? it still is really. Is it know, really? Yeah. yeah, I mean, higher up, you know, the editors, very, very few female you know, music Men with long, thick hair yeah. like Robert Plant, that sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, well, they more sort of they used to wear cardigans. They looked more like they were Smiths fans in my time. Oh, you know, right, Roger more Brown. like Alf Garnet then. Yeah, it? that's <laughs> it. <laughs> but I just thought people might like to hear some of the stories from that era, which is totally gone you know right right yeah. okay so um it's a fascinating read it covers a lot of things obviously uh scar bands and margaret thatcher now i can't mix. think of there's a mix two subjects more pulls apart <laughs> uh, first of all this deal with margaret thatcher um mm. why maggie then well i just happened to get a job in finchley in north london i didn't even know it was margaret thatcher's patch when i got there well, I should have known. I should have known, maybe. But she was the local MP at the time. So once a month, she would come to the local patch and she'd go to a fete or a jumble sale or a factory, you know, meet the local people. And they would send me out to follow her around. So we had quite a few funny moments um, doing that, which I won't give them away now, otherwise you'd no. never read the book. No. But, um, yeah, I spent quite a bit of time running around after Margaret Thatcher, which was uh, for a, a girl from the valleys <laughs> who wouldn't have voted for her. <laughs> I it's quite unusual. So, come on then, what's your impression of Margaret Thatcher? She she was dubbed, of course, the Iron Lady. Yeah. Um, not too many friends in the South Wales Valley, no, if we're no. brutally honest. Um, but, but what did you think of her? How did she come across to you? She, I mean, the only thing I can say is she, she was very good with people. Whoever she met, she was very good with people. And people would kind of look a bit bewitched by her power. She had that 
that power that exuded that sort from of aura. her. Yeah. 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 That, that's what I can say that I would want to say, really. Yes. But yeah, she. I could see why people would fall for her yeah. charms or her, you know, her speeches yeah. at the time. Yeah. Well, she she certainly knew what she was doing. That's a certain, you know, yeah. first female prime minister, of course, etc., yeah. etc. Et um, now you, you've you've covered a lot of bands, of course, uh, over the years. Uh, mm. Madness, including one of them. Um, Favorite band from that era, from that uh, from that era, then oh, it's is it difficult it's to choose? It's so difficult, Gareth. There were just there was so much going on, you know, in the late eighties and nineties. But you had the grunge bands coming over from from America. You had like mm. people like Nirvana. So I would have seen all those those grunge, really noisy rock bands. I would have mm. loved them. Very good, though, time. Really Very good, good, really good. But you know, I would have gone to see Tom Jones. I would have gone to see the Pogues. Um, pop groups, you know, whoever was playing I, and I wanted to review. So it's really difficult to pick a favourite from that era. And of course the, the thing with bands, they're very clever. The publicity machine begins really with the live acts mm. when they start to promote the, the, the new material. And you often, or you would have heard uh, new material before most of the uh, of the UK. Yeah, I remember I was sent um, the Manic's first album right. um, yeah. to review. Mm. I don't think I ever reviewed it actually. I've got to tell you. I didn't like it, and I mm. I'm still not a fan. But I would have heard the Manic stuff early on, and they were, at the time they were just breaking through, and I would have seen them a lot. I remember seeing them a lot in London, and they were you know on the scene um, and when Richie was still with them. Of course, yeah. And yeah. Madness. Madness, yeah. They were my teen heroes when I was a kid, and um, I got to interview um, Lee and Chrissy Boy from the band because mm. they were they'd gone out on their own for a while. As uh, are they as mad as they come across? Yeah, they are really lovely guys as you can imagine and very good musicians as well oh, incredible. people sometimes forget you know what they see is an act but mm. they can play absolutely yeah. yeah and um what about the specials then the specials well i never got to meet them they were actually the first band that i went to see so that, you know they were always something that, that i loved growing I, i'm still a huge fan now mm. so that the whole two-tone thing yeah. yeah so what about venues in london uh, any particular yeah. favorite um, my favourite was the Town and Country Club, which mm. um, the title of the book comes from. Right. Um, it was a massive uh, cavernous sort of venue, which was a, a, it was built as a cinema. So in the 1950s, you'd have like five uh, films on a day, you know, mm. really popular films. And the matinees on a Saturday with the kids. Yeah, yeah, everything. And then it obviously it started failing a little bit um, into the 80s, so they turned it into um, a bit of an Irish dance hall. And then they turned it into a music venue, mm. so and it was the Town and Country Club. Then. So how many live acts would you see, perhaps in a week? Oh golly, I'd go to probably about three gigs a week if I could. Yeah, that's quite a few, yeah, isn't it? To review as well. Mm, yeah, to review so. as well. Uh, any bands that you saw that maybe didn't make it that you felt at the time should have? Well, there was a band called the Disposable Heroes of Hypocrisy. Now <laughs> maybe that's why <laughs> people mouthful. couldn't say the name. <laughs> But the, the guy, the lead singer is a guy called Michael Franti, who's got a band now called Spearhead, who they get plays a lot on Radio 2 now. Mm. But I thought his previous band were mind-blowingly good. They were so good, and they, they mentioned in the book. Yeah. So you went to the venues. Yeah. Um, what, so what inspires you into music in the first place then? Well, do you know, we always had music in the family growing up. And this is in Pontypridd, This is in yes? Pontypridd, yeah. yeah. Um, my mother was a huge radio fan, and my uncle, and when they were kids, they would sit and listen to Radio Luxembourg, mm. and the radio was always on in our house. Wonderful you know? 208. Oh, wow. Fabulous. Well, I'm yeah. slightly too young. Actually, I did used to listen to it under the bed. Clothes, I, like, do you know kids. what? I, I can say this now, because, of course, we, we've sadly lost the station, but mm. when I was a kid, I used to listen to Luxembourg, Tony Prince, mm. Bob Stewart. Oh, I don't remember those. Yeah, Bob Thank Stewart was, was, was quite an iconic uh, character. Mm. And of course, uh, Mike Reed, that was the path right. that uh, Mike took as well. Uh, so many great DJs came from yeah, Luxembourg. Yeah. Under the bed clothes. Oh, yeah. You go to bed yeah. now. And then, of course, we'd listen to Luxembourg until we Absolutely finally dropped off. Absolutely, on a little uh, transistor with a battery. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You could, you know, straight away you just think of those great yeah, moments absolutely. and those and those uh, those uh, those great nights yeah. as well. So you're in London, girl from the valleys, Margaret Thatcher, <laughs> ska bands. Um, so what what would you have done to socialise then? What was the nightlife well, like? Then? My, you know, my nightlife was going to gigs. Mm. That's what I did. Yeah. You know, if that I makes sense, a ticket, of course. Yeah. I'd take a friend. So and there were lots of nightclubs as well. And after the gigs. You'd have you'd dance all night. I remember dancing till the early hours at you know indie nights and you know grungy sort of nights. And uh, 
That was the social life, really. And did you ever get round to uh, Earl's Court and some of the real iconic buildings uh, there, the music yeah. venues? Yeah, I went to see, I remember I went to see the Monkeys in the Hammersmith, I think it's called the Apollo now. It is, yeah. Um, and that's a fantastic venue. Mm. But it's a bit, it was a bit far west for me. Because, so, yeah. so what year did you see the Monkeys? I would have seen them in the late 80s, probably, mm. when they did a bit of a reunion tour. I, I just incredible. Mm. I was a fan. Because I saw them in Cardiff in, I think it was 1997. I saw that one. The yeah. original uh, um, lineup, of course, sadly, we've lost oh, Dave since yeah. then, oh, six years ago, I think. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, tragedy, because they were fantastic live. And it's what I liked so about the Monkeys, uh, they did the, the famous Monkey songs, but then they did their individual sets, remember? It was just a lovely show, wasn't it? Absolutely so brilliant, much, wasn't so it? So much, yeah. You know, we d didn't really expect that. Mm. So, um, how long were you up in London for then? Um, I was up in London nearly five years. Oh, that's so quite a long yeah, time, so isn't it? freelancing for the music press most of those years. And what, so. what do you think of uh, the way that the music press has evolved over the years? What, what do you think of it today then, compared yeah. to perhaps 30 years ago? Well, I think this, the writing is not as good these days, mm. but you've got, everyone can write now because of the internet, you know, mm. everyone can think they can write, mm. um, and obviously everything's gone online, and, and papers like The Enemy, it recently closed its paper yeah, edition. Sad. It is, uh, to me, some of it is old fashioned of me. Mm. It's sad, but it's there, got to move there on. Was some, I used to get sounds delivered yeah. weekly. Um, and of course, the first thing I used to do is you know, the, the, the front page, of course. But then I go to see the section on up and coming concerts. Yeah. And that's how you get, to, like back in the day in the 70s when Led Zeppelin were coming to Cardiff. And I used to say to people, Oh, they played Cardiff, did yeah. they? You know, super group like Zeppelin. Yeah. And I'd say yes, and I was about 20 metres away. And the jaws would drop. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> you know, tw in fact, it was probably a lot less than that. Yeah. Those very small, intimate venues. Yeah. And we've lost that now. People are forced to go to these big arenas, and they're okay. Mm. But, you know, you're literally, you know, 70 metres away sometimes. Mm. And they literally look, you know, I know the listeners can't see this. <laughs> but, they look, but they look that big, don't they? Yeah, yeah. You know, there's you, nothing like a small, intimate venue, is there? You know, no. you, you can actually see the artist up close rather than on a big screen. And this is where, like, places like the Muni, and uh, in, in, in Aberdeen, you know, the, the, the arena there, um, and of course the park in there in, in Triorchy as well. Yeah. You know, this is why it's so important to keep these small venues. Absolutely. You know, the Colosseum in Aberdeen. That's what, that's the the main venue there, and it and it's fabulous. So yeah. intimate as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, favourite band then? Go on. Oh, I think that's impossible. Do you know what? I love New Order. I know Gav plays a lot of New Order, but they've, they've been a favourite of mine since probably I was about 16, 17. Mm. Um, I still listen to them all the time, but I, the Pogues, the Pogues as well. Yeah, just fabulous. Love them. And not just that Christmas song. No, nope, not just that. <laughs> so, it's Town and Country Girl. It's mm. a fascinating read. Um, so how can people get hold of this book then, Steph? Um, it is on a famous website beginning with A. You can buy it online. Okay. But I'll also be selling it at um, future events, hopefully. <laughs> at forthcoming events, because I'll, I'll be donating a pound from the sale of each book that I sell in person to Ponty Food Bank and GTFN. Oh, very, very kind of you, yes. Well, we are a registered charity, so, Yeah, you know. absolutely <laughs> right. Uh, so it's it's a fascinating read, uh, lots of little stories in there, Margaret Thatcher and lots of uh, great music uh, uh, stories as well, and, and some great uh, photographs. Have you got a favourite photograph from the book? I, I do quite like the one of Spike Milligan pretending to inject a pint of milk into his arm, yeah. which only he could get away <laughs> with. And you met you met Spike, didn't I you? I did, I met him at, a, at an event, yeah. Uh, was he as wacky? Absolutely. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. wonderful yeah. man. Great character, another yeah. one of course we've lost in recent years. Mm. Town and Country Girl, from Pontypridd to the Pop Press, Steph McNicholas. There's uh, there's the uh, the name uh, that you need, all you need to know. And like I said, uh, Steph kindly donating uh, a pound, you said, is it, to GTFM? And Pontypridd Food Bank. Absolutely fantastic. Good luck with it, Steph. Thank you, Gareth. It's Thank going to be a great success, uh, because uh, you were a girl that w was actually there, and you witnessed uh, some great musical events, and Margaret Thatcher as well. <laughs> Thank Spike. you. All right then, thanks very much for coming in. Cheers, guys. And for staff, we'll play some Elvis Presley, shall we?